ATO stands for Android Tactical Object Surveillance. The, the idea for the name came from a military working dog uh, that was killed on one of my deployments to Iraq. The story, the story behind it and how Atos really sacrificed his life and saved a, a, a other operators' lives came uh, came from a mission that we did on Christmas Eve. It was Christmas Eve, 2007. Our team was uh, searching for a foreign fighter facilitator in uh, some really deep, uh, thick underbrush. It was just getting dusk uh, when we had intercepted his vehicle and him, the guy that we were looking for, and three other guys uh, escaped from the vehicle and, and ran into this underbrush. As, as the combat controller assigned to that troop, um, I was uh, controlling the ISR assets that were up above us and, and they had uh, they had followed two of the guys as they exited the vehicle and ran into the underbrush, and they had followed them to where they stopped. And so we had a uh, we had a grid coordinate to where we believed they were at, and I told the uh, the aircraft not to take their eyes off of them, off of the last known point, and we began kind of trying to navigate our way through about a couple hundred meters of this this brush maybe five to seven hundred meters or so and it was um, it was really really thick and it was difficult for us to maintain uh, maintain situational awareness I was up front with uh, Sam who was Atos's handler and I was talking with the aircraft and that and through the through the aircraft sensors, we were kind of getting vectors uh, as to which way to go. And I was uh, communicating that to, to Sam as, as the way to what we needed to, to cast the dog because we were, we were really reliant on the, the best sensor we had on the ground, which was Atos's nose uh, in order to close the distance. And so um, we've been in the in the woods for about 20, 30 minutes or so. And by this time, uh, we're, the, our formation is really beginning to kind of get broken up and we're losing line of sight with uh, the other operators that are around us. And uh, but we know that we're we know that we're getting close and, and uh, we hear over the radio. Uh, the pilots, the sensor operators calls me and he says, you know, hey, the dog's in the picture. So we know, like, we're really close, but uh, we don't know where the dog is. And so at this point, everybody's kind of stops and they're kind of looking around, like, you know, moving brush around their, around their feet and, and looking in the, uh, looking in the immediate vicinity so we uh we move a couple uh more meters forward and then uh we got the the second call on the radio that the dog's on them the dog's on and so again like where's the dog uh, and, it, and it's close um, because we can we can begin to hear the scuffle that's that's going on with uh, Atos as he's engaged in this guy, and um, at that at that time, um, Sam uh, goes into the into this thicket, and as he parts the thicket, this guy who was pinned to the ground by Atos uh, pulls out a pistol and uh, fires at Sam, empties his magazine at Sam, and miraculously. Sam isn't hit, and then uh, Sam uh, leans back in uh, with his rifle to uh, uh, to engage this guy. The other members of the troop 
kind of surrounded. Now everybody's kind of coalescing all at once. And that's when the guy detonated his uh, suicide vest. You know, there was a massive explosion. Uh, very close. Uh, the guys, four of our guys were like right on top of him. And he detonated. Uh, and uh, I heard later that uh, as everybody back in the tactical operations center was watching this video feed, you know, here's this, here's this, this finish that ends with this huge explosion. I said that you could hear a pin drop in there because we thought that like four guys had just, I mean, right, so they should all, they should all have been killed. They were grievously wounded uh, for sure. Uh, I was maybe about 10 meters or so away. Uh, so immediately after the explosion, I see um, Sam comes over and he checks uh, Atos who had been blown clear of the explosion. And uh, he was, Atos was dead. As I mentioned, we had four other guys that were pretty grievously wounded. Um, so we set up a, a medevac and got them out. And then brought in some, brought in a QRF and uh, we, went, we went after the other guy. We got him a couple, about an hour or so later. But, um, you know, the idea in you know most of my engagements, um, you know I don't I don't remember a lot about you know many of the gunfights that I was in, um, but um, that one really stuck with me because um, you know I guess I you know I really have always loved dogs. Um, I, was, um, I enjoyed always enjoyed working with the handlers. Um, troops that I was attached to and and, uh, and always try to have good rapport with them because as the uh, as the combat controller uh, on the ground with them we would often work very closely again uh, you know the dog's the best sensor that we have on the ground and so a combination of uh, me talking with the airplanes and then coordinating that with the Handler was a was a very effective team on the ground. Because of that event, I thought, you know, years later, as I was as I was holding this little tag in my hand, I began to think, like, man, if we had uh, if we had had something like this that night, uh, and had been able to. Uh, had been able to better identify not only where all of our guys were, but where the dog was and, and be able to accurately place the predicted location of where that, uh, where our enemy was hiding, uh, that narrative would have been a lot different. I would have saved, uh, you know, obviously the dog's life, but it, uh, we would have been able to exercise a lot better options uh, available to us instead of putting ourselves at risk with a guy that's got a body bomb. The, the thing that I like about Atos and I think what makes it um, what makes it so relevant to these tactical tagging and tracking systems is it is a very it is a very elegant system. There's not a lot of, uh, you, can, you, you can learn how to use it in three minutes or less. And the tag itself is simple. You put a battery in it, hand it to somebody and you can see where they're at. It's, um, it really is, uh, you know, it, it answers a lot of tactical requirements for being able to know where people or things are and it is absolutely the cheapest way to put dots on a map.